My name is Jonathan Almendris. And if you're watching this video, well, you're enjoying the internet. And if you're also enjoying the internet, I hope that you're aware that there is malicious software called malware designed to disable and slow down your computer. We're going to talk about one of the earliest forms of malware, and that is the Morris Worm of 1988. The Morris Worm of 1988. Now what we have here are current antivirus software that are employed today. We have Norton Antivirus, AVG, McAfee, just to name a few. But there was a time in the early days of the internet where there was no security. And as a result, there was the Morris Worm of 1988. Now, we are going to talk about who was Robert Tapman Morris, what exactly was the Morris Worm, and how did it affect the world. Now to understand the impact of the Morris Worm, we have to go back into the 1980s. The internet was not like it was today. It was not available to the mass public and was mostly used by hobbyists at the time. There was only about 60 to 80,000 users on the internet in 1988. Most of them were researchers and some big businesses, but computers were still young and not as common as they are today. When the Morris Worm attack happened, it disabled around 10 to 20 percent of the user base at the time. Compared to today, if there was a worm of similar scale that was released today, unchecked and unchallenged, it would affect somewhere around 5 million users. So who was Robert Tapman Morris? Was he a criminal mastermind? The answer is no, he wasn't. Robert Tapman Morris was born on November 8, 1965, and computer science was the family business. His father was also a computer scientist and had contributed to early operating software such as Multix and Unix. Now ironically, he was employed by the National Security Agency, the NSA. It's ironic because his son would grow up and be the first person convicted of computer fraud. Robert Morris Jr. graduated Harvard and started and attended grad school at Cornell. It was around this time when he programmed the infamous worm. Not with the intention of causing harm, but simply to gauge how big the internet was at the time by creating a program that would visit every single user. Now despite claiming that he meant no harm, Robert Morris released the worm from MIT, not Cornell, on November 2nd, 1988. Probably in a way to cover his tracks, just in case something went wrong, and if they trace it back, they'll trace it to MIT, and not him at Cornell. Now what exactly was the worm? I've said the word quite a few times and haven't actually defined it. Well, that's because it is difficult, and but I will do my best. The definition of a worm is a standalone malware computer program that replicates itself in order to spread to other computers. Maybe you have been a victim of one before. Ever open a spam email or have someone you know send you something suspicious that doesn't sound like it's from them? Then that is a lot like a worm. Worms can cause major disruptions by increasing network traffic, thus making computers operate slower. A popular term you see today is the DOS attack, or DOS. DOS stands for Denial of Service. The best way I can explain it is with this metaphor. Imagine a bank with one door. Customers go in and come out, and the bank is able to process customers in a timely manner. Now picture 100 people trying to enter the bank, all at the same time, through that one door. I'm not talking about 100 people lined up going into the bank one by one, but 100 actual people rushing the door at once and just bumping into each other Three Stooges style, causing a massive, massive jam at the door. That is a lot like the worm. Now no one can enter the bank because it is being flooded by the worm and its copies who deny service to anyone wanting to use the bank. 
And that is what the Morris worm did in 1988. But on a much smaller scale, as not that many people were using the internet compared to today. The Morris worm was intended to gauge how many people were using the internet by visiting each machine via the network and copying itself onto the next one. Morris designed the worm to copy itself no matter what. This led to computer systems having multiple copies of the Morris worm, and if one copy slowed the system down, imagine the effects doubled for every copy it possessed. The worm spread so fast that it disabled thousands of systems. Now the consequences in the post-Morris worm world. The effects of the Morris worm led to demand for a safer internet. The U.S. government estimated the cost of damages to be around $100,000 to $10 million. This led to the creation of the CERT, Computer Emergency Response Team, a government agency designed to counteract massive malware attacks. Now Morris himself was convicted of computer fraud and sentenced to three years probation, a $10,000 fine and 400 hours of community service. This led to the creation of network security, and today is a very lucrative field in the world of IT. So, in conclusion, I hope I was able to tell you a little bit about the Morris Worm of 1988, the effect it had on the computer network, and why we need computer security today in today's post-worm digital world. Again, my name was John Almenders, and thank you for your time.